Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, it's a Friday, towards the end of the week. Today was a pretty relaxing day, and so I thought, well, let's stream, right? So, um, won't hold you there. I'm just gonna dive directly into Elite. Uh oh. There is an issue. I was tinkering with. Um, tinkering with OBS earlier today and of course I messed it up and didn't realize it until now so I'll have to be a little bit patient I need to figure out this um I wonder why it didn't reset. There we go. Maybe. be working now sorry about that I was uh, again today was experimenting with um, capturing my monitor in um, 2k instead of 1080 um, and figure out it was it, it would actually take a lot of uh, other modifications a lot more than I thought it would do so and that's something for maybe this weekend. In any case, um, just to give you a, let's say, kind of a summary of what I've been doing lately. Uh, yesterday, my trip back to my carrier from the bubble. Uh, yesterday night, we stopped somewhere near here. Uh, so earlier today, I've been traveling a little bit towards the carrier. Uh, didn't really find anything special except a bacterium that I think I'd never seen before, maybe since only once or twice before, which was something like a ne nebulous, bacterium nebulous, or something like that. And then today I found this system, uh, which was... Um, not mapped, but it had been discovered before, I think. And um, it has these three moons, which are fairly rich in biological signals. And each one of these has a bunch of stuff that I have um, I've never seen before. I wanted to to start the mapping tonight. Um, there's many things to map here. I'll start with Aleoida. <clears throat> and sorry about my voice. I woke up this morning and my throat was not really in the best condition, even yesterday. But I think the cold weather is and some allergies are not reacting too well with my throat. But anyway. Should have probably chosen the other SRV, but this will do. Minimum distance here. You've traveled over 150 meters from previous sample.
second partial sample collected. Let's get to those down there. We've traveled over 150 meters from the previous sample. Um, need to open my Artemis scanner. Looks like this is which is very convenient. Alioide is very nice to sample because it has only under 50 clone range. the Clavius. Sample collection complete. And I appear to be unable to run again tonight. I have to investigate if this is a recent bug or something like that. I've been experiencing this since like a week or two ago. And I honestly didn't change anything, so. I don't know what could be causing it. I think. Minimum distance mm. reached. You've we'll see. Over 150 meters I think they are too sample. close, but it's worth a try. Yep. No, this one is good. <laughs> Lucky. Partial sample collected. Wait. There we go. Minimum distance reach. You've traveled over one hundred and fifty meters from previous sample. I think this is Tassok. Possibly. Sample collection complete. First partial sample collected. Not sure if I've ever seen this one. Uh, I think so, maybe once. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 200 meters from previous sample. This literally looks like grass. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I have something similar, very similar to this in my backyard. Maybe not this tall, but still fairly similar. <clears throat> Man, my my voice. Minimum distance reach. Oops. You've traveled over two hundred meters from previous sample.
Sample collection complete. Uh, this is Stratum Peleus, which I've seen multiple times before, but Last apparently not this variant in this region. So I'll grab it. Not particularly valuable. Like 1.4 million, but not bad either. And it's a first sample, so. Um, I get five times that. I think this may still be too close. Yes. The one down there. Distance reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sampling. Oh, come on. Second partial sample collected. Don't want them there. Distance reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. Okay. Um, sample collection complete. Actually, made a list here, so let me see. Aleoida Dawn, Bacterium, Clypeus. No, I actually didn't do the Bacterium. So that's the only one missing. And then I have to move to find the Concha and Fungoida. Which could be a Concha Labiata Red. Is you were wondering. <clears throat> Trying to see if I can spot any bacterium. Maybe the one down there, but it looked like a. Um, a what's it called? Stratum Peleus. No more gamer. Oh yeah. Yeah, I every time I find um, places with more than let's say four, five, sometimes uh, biological signals, I always have to make a list because otherwise I kind of forget what. What I can find in a specific region before moving away. And of course, I learned this lesson by forgetting to sample something and then having to go back uh, to a specific region to find it. Um. 
and I know there's there's commanders who have a physical notebook. I have one of these um, electronic things, uh, the the modern stuff. But um, I know commanders who actually keep a paper logbook of their findings or notes on anything, um, which is something that. I tried to do actually at first when I started exploring, but it wasn't, wasn't really my thing. I've never been a, a great note taker, which doesn't mean I don't take notes. I do. In fact, I take notes all the time. But. Um, I generally only take notes of very specific things that otherwise I wouldn't remember. Otherwise, I I prefer to keep my, um, you know, my memory trained. I don't know how to explain it. Um, because I also have kind of a bad bad memory for certain things, so I I like to. You know, keep it exercised. First partial sample collected. Otherwise, I find myself to be too much dependent on notes. And it looks like I didn't really need to sample the bacterium, but it won't hurt. Still something fun to do. And my stream monitor here in front of me is still telling me that the connection is unstable so if you experience any weirdness with the stream uh, feel free to let me know I I reviewed my VOD from yesterday night and it seemed to be fine but you never know Solid. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, OBS is telling me that everything is fine, so no drop frames or anything. But, um, you never know, like, starting a few months ago, sometimes when I... When I watch a stream myself, I I have issues with with um, with like the video not loading or choppiness, that kind of stuff. And I know it's on my end; it's not the streamer's fault. So um, I don't really know what causes that, but um, something of started to experience a few months ago and it appears to be independent of the browser or stuff like that so honestly don't know what to think there we go By the way, this depression right here is the next region. In fact, 
I just swung by some um, uh, fungoida. I think those were fungoida. Yeah. Yep. Stabitis. 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, but yeah, it was fungoida. Yeah, um, I don't know if if it is very region dependent. Uh, I've been finding it quite often in this region. Otherwise, it's uh, the other one I tend to find is. Um, I don't know how to describe it, but it's the one that kind of looks like almost like a bunch of tentacles, but or maybe inverted roots. Maybe that that is a better description. Um, I know I have a screenshot somewhere of that one. Because it can be very pretty, it's kind of translucent too. Gelata, yes, gelata is the one. Yeah, gelata, absolutely. Yeah, that's the one. Um, yeah, the, the, the tentacles things can be a little bit translucent. And I have a, have a screenshot, uh, a series of screenshots from a few that's months ago. When I when I saw a red, I think it was a red one or an orange one. Very very pretty. Uh, let me see if I can find it somewhere. Um, screenshots. Elite. Uh, I know it's here somewhere. Yeah, here. This one. Uh, it's. It can be very pretty. I think. I think this one was orange, because it seems a bit yellowish, a bit too yellowish for being red. But yeah, looks kind of like a bunch of tentacles. Uh, I don't know how to describe. <laughs> Anyway. Minimum distance reached. Is this one far away now? Yes, it is. This is very lucky. <laughs> Sometimes these fungoida are a little bit challenging to, to find. Because you find one and then you wander forever. Find the next one. I think I just saw something. Yeah, this, this one is a little bit translucent as well. See how, you know, if I look from here, it's like all blue. But then, if it goes the other way around, it's reddish. Not sure if I ever noticed this with uh, Stabitis. Stabitis. It's probably Stabitis. This Latin. I don't know, in Italian, I may pronounce it Stabitis. Which, and often Italian is similar to Latin in pronunciation. The emphasis is on the same syllable. Minimum distance reached. Um, You've traveled over 300 meters from previous sound. But I, I, I don't remember the rule for Latin pronunciation. I know it's often the second syllable 
and if not it's the third one so stabitis or stabitis sta no stabitis latin will probably be stabitis I, I digress. And as expected, hard to find the next one. But I only need one, huh? Here it is. I just had to speak up and say something. This is also when, or better where, a small size ship would really, really help. It, it seems to be easy enough, at least for now. <clears throat> I need to fix this. It's kind of annoying. What if I just delete it? And then resume. And then go back and set it again. Oh, this is interesting. Um, something is happening. Yes. Hmm. See how my cursor is like disappearing. probably no still the same issue what is happening The game is being very unhappy. In fact, extremely unhappy right now. Hmm. I never had this issue. So. There is something wrong with my keyboard, apparently. Or something like that. Yeah, it's my keyboard. Alright. I'll have to try and fix it. Um, I am on my way back to Hawkins. Right now, I'm Sample collection complete. here. So I just entered the the outer Orion spur, and then once I go back to my carrier, I'm just gonna visit a few guardian sites that are near this nebula, and then I'm going to immediately move to Hawkins and probably spend at least a few weeks there because I think what I'm gonna do is 
to slowly go this way and then this way because um, I may swing by this waypoint here or other waypoints down here so maybe not a direct route but this will be the then uh, visit the guardian site here and then the other guardian sites that are in this region right here. I think there's other two, one or two sites uh, near to the core. And then Sagittarius A star because I've never been there. I wonder what is wrong with my keyboard. Don't even know if I can take it apart to check if it's like a bad contact or something. I got it for free though, so can't really complain too much. Anyway, um, hopefully there won't be any surprises. <clears throat> now, normally, if I were to, I would. It's kind of a deep canyon. Is that a concha? Just a rock. There it is. Renibus. Nice. more down there okay well I'll start with these few sites probably just go on foot because I don't think the SRV is gonna be any of any use down there
Yeah, oh. Um, he was stuck. I like how the glow in the dark. I wonder if there's any down there because then I can do one down there and at least one down there. I don't think there is any. No, nope, nothing. Two seconds, do they glow in the dark? It almost looks like the the appendices here glow in the dark. But I'm not a hundred percent sure. If if I find a another planet with these, I'm gonna try and go on the night side. Cause now I'm very curious. Should have not jumped there. But Somehow I was flying uphill. Don't know how, but I did. <laughs> there we Minimum go. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 150 meters from previous sample. Second partial sample collected. Yes. Great. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 150 meters from previous sample. There we go. Sample collection complete. There we go. This is what the jump assist and like the improved jump assist helps you do. You, you can just jump a ton and boost your with your jetpack. All those hours spent um, doing Odyssey ground mats paid off. The other one, the other modification I put on is night vision, 
and increased sprint so I can run longer jump higher and can see something in the dark Okay, now the next moon. going to be this one I think although I can check on the or review uh. kind of the same yeah Just go with the second moon and then, if necessary, the third one. The second moon also potentially has a uh, concha labiata, red, uh, which apparently I'm missing in this region, so um, I'm gonna try there first. Uh, the other bias of interest being an Alioida Arcus Turquoise and a Tasso Calbata Green which are not necessarily there but I hope so so that will be at least three new buyers Oops. I was adjusting my my seat here and got distracted for a second there. a marked biological and may host a high value biological only tasok so that's what i'm gonna look for unfortunately no concha only the same bacterium and also stratum paleus most likely
I'm already seeing two out of three. Except the tussock. There it is. First partial sample collected. Minimum distance reach. You've traveled over 200 meters from previous sample. Second partial sample collected. do a triangle survey so I don't wander too far off from the ship Minimum distance reached. you've traveled over 200 meters from previous This also looks like the grass I have outside in my backyard, <laughs> except it's the leaves don't look like, I don't know, some kind of snake tongue. I don't know how to describe oh, feathers, I like feathers. Anyway, let's go check the third moon. Hoping it has the concha. Most likely not, but we just never know. So after I do that, 
the next step is going to be uh, for some strange reason oh yeah I know why um, need to go down here and then here and I think this is going to be a neutron jump yeah it is I'm starting to see the first few systems that have never been visited before but I'm still a bit too close to the to the bubble to see that consistently. I'm like 3000, maybe 4000. Yeah. 3 4000 light years from the bubble. Usually I need to go 5000 ish to start to you know, see multiple systems in a row that have never been visited. Which is really amazing because the the star density in this region is is fairly high. Like if you check. Uh, these are a lot of stars and I am actually kind of above the, the plane too. And still, there, there are so many systems that have, that have been visited already. It's, it's really amazing. Like, there are so many stars and we have explored like... I think the last estimate I saw was... 0.06%. Not even one in a thousand. It's like... 6 in 10,000 stars. That's how many we have visited. And unless you go kind of far away from the bubble, you know, someone else has already been here. And it's it's really impressive. Like the galaxy is big, but there's also so many explorers. Which is awesome, honestly. Oh, and I'm seeing that we have advertisements incoming, so um, let's do this. I'm gonna take a 3-4 minute break and then I'll see you again in after, after the advertisements. So you don't have to sit and watch them and then you'll get one hour advertisement free. So I'll see you very soon.
All right, everyone should be back from the advertisements. So we can proceed. Wait. <laughs> Someone discovered this. Made the first footfall, but no one ever scanned it. That's uh, an interesting approach. <laughs> I wonder what was the the train of thought there. slow down a bit, make sure I read all the data that may be of interest. Body B3. Ooh. Carbon dioxide atmospheric landable with life. May host a marked biological. Body B1. Ammonia atmospheric landable with life. May host a marked biological and has high biological value. Okay. These are interesting. Yeah. Yeah, B1 and B3 are the most interesting ones. See, you, you never you never know what you're gonna find. In this case, the around the brown dwarf too. Yeah, class L. I think is L Y T, so it's the warmer type, but still, uh, this one has five biological signals. Which is quite a lot. And of those five, there might be up to four that I've never seen before. Including a stratum tectonicus. Which is always nice to find.
if you're wondering why I'm going this way a little bit, uh, well, first was to get out of the orbital plane so I could see all the orbits. And the second time I adjusted my trajectory again, it was because I, I like to encounter a planet where it's like like these three, uh, let me see if I can, you know, it's like three quarters illuminated and part not. Because then I can see the surface and it's uh, easier for me later to, um, to make a landing. I don't have to wander as much when I'm too close. DB1 may host a marked biological and has high biological value. Okay, so um, here we have fungoid. And stratum are like in almost completely opposite terrains and nothing else really of interest so I'll start with stratum because stratum is easy to find and in the meantime, I can keep an eye out for the fungoida, which may be a little bit more challenging to find. So I need to go in this darker blue area. That's a very red planet. <clears throat> Hello, Nightwolf. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, but I don't have the kind of command. At least not yet. <laughs> How are you? Welcome in. So nice to see you. But I I promise that at some point I I will implement something like that. Nice. Again, my sprinting is malfunctioning. Last part 
Special Sample Collective. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from the previous sample. Second partial sample collected. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled this was almost too easy. Also, it really shows how how easy it is to to make a lot of money very quick. Um, if you go out like 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 me, like three, four thousand light years, um, you may find some first discoveries of stratum tectonicus and other valuable exobiological samples. Sample collection complete. And make like, in this case, 85 millions in what, like five minutes. I don't think there is anything that. Wait, what is happening? That can give you so much money in such a short time. I can spot any fungoida. It's fungoida setises, so it's gonna be like uh, like those uh, thin, tall mushrooms, if I remember correctly. Usually inhabits these mountain regions yep there it is oh. this is convenient I've been very lucky with landings lately. <clears throat> like I'm finding all these extremely accessible bios. You know, sometimes for this kind of fungoid you have to look and look and look and it never spawns and then it spawns in the middle of like these very rough mountains. And you never ever see it again. Like there are planets where I spent like 15-20 minutes just to find something like the second sample.
Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 300 meters from previous sampling. an interesting rock. Oh. There it is. Actually two. Can I land here? Probably not. Maybe here. Also probably not. The minimum distance is 300 Second meters, so those are probably too close. I think I spoke to you sooner earlier. Because now I can't see any other fungoida. Oh, there it is. The problem is gonna be landing.
find another one. It is, I think. No, just a rock. It kind of looked like a, a small set of fungoida from far away. Yeah, that's a fungoida though, right there. Come on, please, 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 please. No, yeah, there it is. That a mini fungoid? It is. <laughs> it's so cute. It's like so small. Sample collection complete. Interesting texture here too. You know, uh, I think this could be a good example of um, for some science time. I promise it will only take like two minutes, but this kind of reminds me of um, some crustal blocks that are found on Mars. Um, uh, in in a region called Sirtis Major, Sirtis Major. Let's see if I can find them. Because I was misspelling it. Um, this, maybe. I know there is a very good picture of those things. No, this is way too hard to see. Um.
I have a, an image of Mars in mind. Uh, I know it's here. And I know it's here because it was proposed as one of the potential landing sites yep, for Mars 2020, now Perseverance, the Perseverance rover. And um, this is basically a region where there are remnants of these gigantic blocks of rock that are, were excavated from the crust by a giant impact that formed the Isidus Basin and are now, you know, were thrown out and are now found, found like all over the place, but especially here in Sirtis Major. And so this was um, proposed as a landing site for the Mars 2020 rover. Uh, but there is a picture that is so beautiful. Um, the problem is that I don't seem to be able to find it, but maybe I found it here. I saw it here. This is an awesome blog. I don't think it's maintained anymore, unfortunately, but um, I'm going to put it in chat. It's, if you look for Laurie Fenton, uh, Cosmic Diary, you, you're going to find it. And uh, Laurie Fenton is an amazing scientist who um, used to publish these blogs, like weekly blogs, really. As you can see, like it's every single week, sometimes even twice a week, um, about images on Mars and what she saw on those images and it's it's amazing like uh, from an image like this she can tell you the entire story of 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 that region it's it's impressive it's a skill that very few geologists have um, and I can tell you right away I'm not so skilled I wish I was. Oh, here it is. Here we. Here it is. Um, this is the image I was looking for. Um, this is a a color image from a camera called High Rise. Um, the image is probably less than a kilometer across. Um, I don't know if, if there is a scale anywhere, but it's from the floor of one of those impact craters. And this is the, um, her interpretation of it. So essentially there are some dunes. Well, they may not be dunes actually. They may be other things called tars. Uh, honestly, I don't know. I would have to read the blog. Because um, she's, I think, chiefly an Aeolian geologist, but she she knows all, all kinds of stuff. But essentially, on the floor of this impact crater, there's these gigantic blocks. These are like hundreds of miles, uh, which are essentially big blocks of the Martian crust that were excavated like four billion years ago, thrown away thousands of kilometers and then fell back to the surface and are now making the bedrock. Um, kind of like this. See how there's these blocks? Like there's one here, there's another one there, another one here, so on and so forth, right? I mean, th these are small, but on Mars we, we see all scales of these things, including these gigantic things. And it looks like there's also these dark streaks, which I wonder if they are like magmatic intrusions. So basically 
Imagine this rubble uh, excavated by this gigantic impact. This rubble flies away, lands here, and it's essentially a gigantic rubble pile, and then there is lava filling in all the holes and kind of cementing everything together. Um, I think this is what might be going on there. Not entirely sure, though. But this is amazing. And if you're interested, this is the specific post post I I I remember. There might be more actually. But um uh, highly recommend this. And in fact, yeah, that's what she starts with. Like it's the fourth landing site workshop for the Mars twenty twenty rover. Um this was one of the candidate sites because it's essentially sending a rover there would uncover the ancient history of Mars, you know, how these gigantic impacts happen, the early crust uh, on Mars, like what it looked like. Uh, because one of the issues is that there are many places on Mars where we might have ancient rocks. But one of the problems is that these ancient rocks have been exposed on the surface for like billions of years. Sometimes like since they were formed 4 billion years ago or so. They are so weathered, so altered that they don't carry as much information about their formation anymore. Uh, they mostly tell you about the rest of the Martian history, which is super interesting, but it doesn't tell you as much about the early history of Mars, which is clearly, you know, influenced by the presence of liquid water, lakes, potentially oceans, for sure rivers, and, and we want to know more about it. Uh, the problem is that Either you go in a place like that, where you have these gigantic blocks still exposed, or uh, or it's it's very hard to find another pristine record of ancient Mars. Anyway, um, looks like I I there's also a good chance to find something new here, so. I'll go there. I don't think these have ever been sampled before. Because I think otherwise it would say, like, first discovered by and then commander name.
body B3. May host a marked biological and may host a high value biological. Two of them actually. Bacterium and Frutexa. <laughs> Which are in almost completely opposite locations, but will make you work. Okay, I'm gonna go there. Protect some may be challenging to find, but we'll see. <clears throat> First partial sample collected. distance reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. Um. Second partial sample collected. I just realized that I, I don't think my closed captions are working. Uh, let me see. Maybe.
Okay. Hey, if they were not working now, they should be. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sampling. Sample collection complete. My best bet for taxis to go on those mountains because otherwise, I would have probably already seen it. Tusk, though. No? For Texa. Unlucky. This is the Metallicum uh, species. Uh, it kind of has a metallic shine to it, I guess. <clears throat> Man, my voice. I should probably look on flatter terrain though. Because even if I find Protexa here, it's gonna be next to impossible to land near it. bunch um, let's try here it's probably not gonna work but not nope, too narrow maybe down here somewhere probably too steep let's go here Nope. 
I saw it blip for a second. not gonna find it. Nope, oh, there it was. I saw it again. Here. Oh, come on. It's like a one by one centimeter area. There we go. Persistence. Second oh, I... You know what? I could sprint if I can. Can I sprint, please? No. I'll jump. May not be as fast, but it'll be kind of rapid anyway. There it is. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 150 meters from previous sample. Sample collection complete. That's another far rock. Conglomerate. See? Small pieces called clasts in a redder matrix. I really like how the terrain rendering works in this game. It's fairly realistic, not super realistic, but does a very good job, honestly. One of the best terrain renderings I've ever seen. Oh man, these things. This thing of not being able to run is really annoying me. I'll, I'll try to fix it off stream tomorrow. Alrighty. Next system. See if we have anything of interest. Possibly. Body three. 
Meets mapping criteria. Oh. 42. Meets mapping criteria. High metal contents. System discovery complete. First body to map is three. I love this new function in um, Observatory. Uh, I don't know if Matt G is in chat, but or lurking. Um, but if you are, thank you so much. Or if you if you watch uh, the stream later on, thank you so much for that. It's so handy. Oh, and I see I have advertisements coming in soon. So I think... You know what? Instead of um, uh, going over a super cruise here, I'm gonna run the ads right now. So I'll, we'll also take a, a break. So then you'll, you'll have a full hour and free after this. So, see you in three minutes. Everyone should be back. I just scanned one of the two planets. The other one will soon be the next.
and thanks you thank you for you know being patient through the hats i i take these breaks so i can stretch my legs and and also so i can run all the ads uh it's not something i can control too much if it was for me i would just um avoid ads altogether but if i don't do this then twitch will place them at other times and I don't think anyone likes hats, so I just take these breaks instead, so you can, so you don't have to watch, and then you get an hour free. Mapping complete. No more bodies to map. Um, let's see if I can do three jumps. Without having to go back to this. Nope. Although, honestly, I could probably use a, a refueling at some point. So this is good enough. One, two, three. There we go. was hoping for some planets because this system has never been visited before but oh well we'll find more
missed it. Um, wait. I think it's yeah this way. Sometimes the the chat kind of pulls you in, otherwise it pushes you out. Not really sure if there is any reliable mechanic here to be learned, but. Ooh, interesting. I should probably scan these just to make sure I'm not missing anything. This is gonna be either a water ward or a water giant. Water giant. Not so common. Ammonia atmospheric landable with life. Oh yeah. May host a marked biological and has high biological value. That's a good stuff. All right. Well, um, nice to see you and thank you for the lurk. Really appreciate. Ammonia atmospheric landable with life. May host a marked biological and has high biological value. Body 1i. Ammonia atmospheric landable with life. May host a marked biological. Um. All these moons are pretty much the same. So let's see. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, which one of these two? Uh, I'll go to the second one. It's maybe a um, slightly better chance to find some previously unsampled bios. Thank you. No, I I always appreciate misadventures. Um, uh, always appreciate the lurk. Um, uh, you know, I I do that all the time. So, <laughs> space nerds got to stick together. Absolutely, absolutely. Although I found I found that um, inevitably we we tend to stick together anyway, <laughs> even if we want it or not. You know, independent of that. But always appreciate the support. Thank you. You are always way too nice.
there are going to be at least the three new buyers for me here. Yep. Three tiers. Okay, uh, I think I need to go... here. So, um, I'm seeing that there is a... Um, an impact crater there. The problem is that Alioida does not occur in the impact. I should probably check if this is... Yeah, okay. It is shared. So... I'm gonna go there. Oh wow. This is not at all what I was expecting. Amazing. fast. So I'm already seeing a bacterium, which is good. Let me see if I can find the Aleoid and Vertex as well. Aleoida is Laminie, which, if I remember correctly, kind of looks like a Tassock, except that this is probably actually a Tassock. It is. I seem to remember it's like a grass-like um, species. Also, I should be seeing through text of Flabellum. But I also know that that is all is going to be much more of a challenge. This is probably outside the territory of some of this stuff. Still Tassock.
too low. I may have to do these buyers one at a time. So I'm gonna start with the bacterium. Partial sample collected. Just had an idea. Wait, why is it tab now? What? doesn't make any sense. Why, why is it tab? Let me do this too. No? Uh, not an old though. Maybe it's not my keyboard after all. I I don't understand why it was set as a tab. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. one right here two of them actually Nice view of the um, brown dwarf. Second partial sample collected. Big rings too. This is such a nice ship. My my only critique to the ship is this. I personally would have not put this so low. I would have put it higher up in between the two I don't know what to call these things. <laughs> but I would have put it yeah, 
I wrap in here, maybe a little bit more in front. But otherwise, one of my favorite shipping game. Not just for functionality, for the looks too. It's really nice. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. Sample collection complete. I love this game. I I wish I had started playing it early. Um, I I heard of it multiple times. Uh, nearly every single time it was from another scientist. Uh, the only exception is when I saw... Um, what's his name? Scott Manley. Uh, talk about it in... I think it was on Twitter or something. Uh, but otherwise I've always heard about this game bef before I started playing from other scientists and I know the reason it's it's a cool it's a cool science game And it clearly shows that, at least early on, the developer team had scientists, actual scientists, in there. Uh, I think I just saw the... Frutexa? This is Frutexa, I think. Yep, yep, this is Frutexa. Probably lower the landing gear.
first partial sample collected. These flowers or seed pods are so cool. Could have probably walked to one of these. Traveled over 150 meters from previous sample. I forgot that Frotex has only needs only under 50 meters. Second partial sample collected. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 150 oh, wow. meters from previous sample. This is some more geology down here. Sample collection complete. This rock uh, looked like layered from the distance. But they're really interesting. These things. These are like ridges. As if there was some layering in the bedrock. trying to think if there is a, a good a good example on earth or mars or the moon that i can show you of something similar to that i've seen it before for sure but i do, don't know where i would look Try and find the Aleoida. She is extremely elusive for some reason. Usually Aleoida is super easy to find because it's everywhere.
Oops. That's a very square rock. Well, not so square from this side, but looks almost like looked almost like a perfect cube. I'm flying very low because I know some, that sometimes um, some species only spawn when when you're very close to the ground, or at least they do that with my graphic settings. I'm not finding any Leoida whatsoever, so NB is to find a spot where the Leoida presence is just a solid blue instead of being like at the edge or spotty. So, I looked here, couldn't find it. I'm gonna try... I'm gonna go there. If I can find it again. Uh, wait, I think it was down there, but I'm not so sure. Need to go back up. Very rough terrain. I'm gonna try here.
I'm starting to think that this alioid is more of a myth than anything else. Uh, this I'm pretty sure is still Tassa Coltra. Yeah. It is. I'm in the right place, but... I don't think I'm gonna find any Aleoida. This is for tax, huh? I don't find it here. I'm gonna try with the other moon. If I don't find it there either, I'm just gonna move on. Because I even if I can't sample it, I would still love to... Oh. This, there it is, finally. Because at, at the very least I want to scan it. Um, is that more Aleoida? Yes, okay. This I can work with. Let's try and find a landing spot. Which is going to be probably impossible. Maybe here. Okay, so... Big cluster behind me. Oh dear. This is going to be a challenge. I don't think I have any chance of sampling it. Oh, maybe here. Let's try. You know what? First, you have some behind me, some there. Okay.
the train doing here? It's a very pretty one too. This is not at all what I thought it was. First partial sample collected. Wait a second, why is my SRV not red? Hmm. Need to change this. Because I'm pretty sure I bought the red skin uh, for the scorpion. Still not far away? Enough? Nope. Too close. Minimum distance You've traveled over 150 meters from the previous Second partial sample collected. This is worth a picture. Uh, let me see. Almost. There it is. SRV. Don't want to lose it yet. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 150 meters from previous.
Sample collection complete. What color is that? I I didn't realize it was. I don't even know how to. Oh, okay. I guess it's the um, British spelling of o Ocre. It's Ocre in Italian. And I've never seen it spelled this way. But I guess the game being British, you know, they decide how to spell things. Kind of reminds me of a um, funny situation. It was at the end of a. Um, it was a fairly small conference, like 20, 30 people. Um, and we were essentially summarizing the results of the conference. And uh, one of the scientists was typing in um, all our notes. And uh, she she's a British scientist, so... Um, Basically, she was typing on a U.S. computer, so the, the spelling was with American English, not with British English. And it was marking all the words as, as wrong, as misspelled. And she was like, "No, this this is how you pronounce this, uh, how you spell this thing." And you would be surprised how many times things like journals will be picky about how you spell things. Uh, because, you know, typically I write and my colleagues write in American English. But recently I published on a, on a journal that is Swiss. And uh, they marked a few things as potential misspelling because they, they were using a... I guess a British dictionary, not an American one. Anyway, we are done here. Uh, this is turning out to be not as much progress for traveling, but a lot of new buyers. Um, I haven't seen these many new buyers in a long time. It's uh, it's a very nice variety.
fast. Okay. Let's see if there is anything worth scanning here. See potentially one or two. So I should probably check how far away they are. Well, they are kind of close. Nothing special, I think. Or at least worth mapping. I didn't hear anything, meaning that, yeah, nothing special. So, let me set up the next couple of jumps. And then I'm seeing ads incoming so this is probably a good spot to take a quick break i'll see you in three four minutes
Alright, everyone should be back from the ads. Grab a few snacks. I think I forgot to honk. Where's the other one? Here. I always scan these metal rich high metal contents because every once in a while you find the one that is, you know, terraformable and valuable. Which is actually quite a lot of money, I think. Something like two millions. Uh, before bonuses, so with the f with the first discovery bonus, I think it's another twenty five percent or something like that. Just one? Yeah. It's probably not gonna be terraformable, but I'll scan it anyway. If I can find it. It's not here. There it is. Body one. Highly eccentric orbit. 
Be interesting. Ooh. Look at this guy. That's that's really a highly eccentric orbit. Wow. You don't see these too often. Anyway. Uh, oh, I'm already at this destination. How many neutron? Two, one, two. Okay, good. So it looks like I'm briefly visiting the neighboring region. To repair the FSD. Nice. No, yeah. oh, is it? No, not charging. All right. Uh, oh. Okay. Let me see. Uh, I can turn these off too. I guess I need more neutron jumps than I thought. Can get
Uh huh. Some planets to map. like we have a few moons Ring. Nice. Icy planet with an icy ring. Looks like nothing too special. Yeah, this guy. Big icy planet. Body B1. Landable large planet. Body C2. Neon atmospheric landable with life. May host a marked biological. That's going to be an issues. Yeah. Not gonna bother with it though.
Actually, I want to check. Not this one. Yeah, okay. Never mind. It looked like a, a rocky, but there were no rockies. So. Not gonna bother with it. Whoa! <laughs> That's a trippy neutron. Sorry if this is too flashy. It's it's very annoying. I'll get out of the cone as soon as I can. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> I I still needed the boost. Um Okay, I don't see anything special. Alright, let's plot the way again. So what I did was, instead of going directly from the bubble to the carrier, I kind of went sideways a little bit, because earlier today I realized that this is actually a fairly popular route, because there are Guardian sites there so relatively popular route also people then continue to go like in in the Dryman's Point or Norma's Expanse um, so you know I kind of wanted to avoid the beaten path but now I can go back to it I guess So, actually, I needed that. <laughs> Let's point... to maybe... something like this. I want to stay above the plane a little bit. Not too much though. Because what I found is that um, if you go too much above or below the galactic plane, then um, yeah, there are not as many people going through that, but there's also much less planetary systems. So it's much harder to actually find um, something new. So seems like the sweet spot is kind of at the edge of the densest part of the galactic plane, something like this. Because see, otherwise stars become way too sparse. And you know what? I should have probably disabled M dwarfs as well because I'm a bit tired of M dwarfs. Oh, no. Of the jumps. And over the weekend, I'll probably finish it. All 
All right. It's a nice one. Forty three F Carbon dioxide atmospheric landable with life. May host a marked biological. Body 3i. Carbon dioxide atmospheric landable with life. May host a marked biological. Body 3 I think all of these are gonna have Close biologicals. To body, size. body 3e. Carbon dioxide atmospheric landable with yep. life. May host a marked biological. Body 3d. Carbon dioxide atmospheric landable okay. with life. May host a marked biological and has high biological value. What do we have here? Um, A few different things. So I'm gonna map this guy because it's almost at the threshold that I set for mapping. So it's it's a little bit valuable and it's super close, so worth it. Then body three with all the moons. 
and 3D is the best one. We say Concha Labiata and a Two Sock Serati. The others are nearly the same. Body 3D may host a marked biological and has high biological value. Yeah. Um, where is the concha? <clears throat> concha, where are you? Oh, they're right there. It's, there's a tiny microbic speck. to the same place where yeah everything else is
I have no idea why Concha will be only here and not elsewhere, but looks like there are some canyons. So hopefully it's gonna be down here. Oh wow, look at that. It's like a band. These canyons are good for canyon running. Yeah, here it is. Classic concha. So a few more down there. Yeah, they seem to be kind of all over the place. Solitary concha. The best partial sample collected. Might be another one down there. Over oh, that's actually the tussock. Um, I thought I saw some concha down here. But it might have been rocks. Or maybe it was the tussock. This is what I saw. Second partial sample collected. Traveled over 150 meters from previous sample. <laughs> sample collection complete.
first partial sample collected. I really like that layer. I don't know how it's generated, but it looks real. I think the other tussock I saw was down here somewhere. You've traveled over 200 meters from the yep. There it is. Second partial sample collected. Boom. <laughs> Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over two hundred meters from previous sample. There it is. <laughs> Sample collection complete. Alrighty, next system. I think tonight is maybe not a record night for new discoveries, but kind of close to it. I must have found something like 
15 new, new buyers, at least new to me. Because it was two here, two earlier. In the other system, it was three or four. So that's already kind of close to 10. Seven or eight for sure. A few others here and there, so yeah, it must have been probably around 15 new buyers. Like three, four hours, that's... That's pretty good. Oh, so tight. No, 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 wait. Wrong button. Here. Thought I honked, but. Yeah, the, the wrong scanner set up. Criteria. There you go. Body four A. Ah. Potential guardian ruin body. Which one? Four A. Hmm. No. I mean. Not expecting to find anything here, but you never know. Okay. Need to move away a little bit. Potential guardian ruin body. Body five meets mapping criteria. System discovery complete. First body to map is four. Yep, yeah, these two are. Over two millions each. This one is almost 2.2, the other one just over 2.2. And it's because they are high metal content and terraformable. And on top of that, I believe. I believe I need to add another 25% for the. Not the new discovery. I think earlier I said new discovery, like first discovery, but for the um, mapping bonus. Like for mapping with less than N probes. Not entirely sure if observatory takes into account that bonus, but even if it does, it's still 2 millions. It's quite a bit of money. It's it's more than certain water wards. There are water wards that are not transformable that are just over a million.
should have probably wait. And I should have sent another probe. <laughs> eh. It's the price to pay for impatience. Eighty-eight percent. Oh well. There we go. This should be sufficient. Mapping complete. Next body to map is fine. Down three, like in a triangle, just to be safe. But again, this should be good enough. Mapping complete. No more bodies to map. Thirty one bodies. All right, this is probably going to be the last system for tonight because it's starting to be a little bit late. And uh, I see we have advertisements incoming, but I'll, I'll snooze them, so no worries about that. Binary gas giants. I see ring. Body six. I see ring. This is potentially good uh, fleet carrier stuff. 
There is at least three icy rings. Potentially more. Body 7F. Argon atmospheric landable with life. May host a marked biological. Body 7E. Argon atmospheric landable with life. May host a marked biological. Body 7D. Argon atmospheric landable with life. May host a marked biological. Body 7C. Argon atmospheric landable with life. They all have the same thing. It's gonna be the same bacterium and fonticulo. Oh, it's potentially a shepherd moon. Alright, let's see what we have. Yeah, Vesicula and Campestris. Um, so, since there was a moon close to rings, I think, 5A, yep. Uh, two, three, five, A. Let's go there. Maybe it's gonna look nice. Also, I, I could also go to those Vesicula and Campestris, they are both new to me. Yeah, let's do that. Change of mind. And I think some of these have geysers too. No. Was it these? No. Nope. Oh, this one was with the geysers. Hmm. Next time. Next time I'll visit some geysers.
Body 7C may host a marked biological. No, what I'm gonna go here close to the Terminator, so maybe I get to see a nice sunset or dawn. <clears throat> Look at that. Let's see if I can find a fonticula. <laughs> Just one. Sometimes they make entire forests. Oh, that's the bacterium too. Relatively easy to see. Ah, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. Can I land here? No. Too close. No step on capacitors. I guess the ship doesn't like all these rocks, which is really high, nice, but. Hmm. Seems to s this seems to be a good place to stop for today. It's a nice sun. I don't know if it is a sunset or sunrise. All I know is that it looks pretty. There we go. My resolution screenshot. And this is it. <laughs>